mentioned yesterday that you go back and look at Iowa's you know, trick plays on the field. You sort of look at your games against Iowa too, and since they don't change much from year to year to, to game plan for a game like this. Yeah, we look at all of it. Uh, we probably want to move farther away from these guys in the future. Okay. Um, we look at all of it. We go back and watch, obviously, our games, um, especially because there hasn't been turnover on the staff, uh, their staff, but they're also looking at us differently because uh, we've had some changes. Um, but yeah, we look at it all. We go back and obviously look at the games from this year, look at uh, the late games from last season, bowl game, um, and then obviously, you know, our previous games. Usually on special teams, you have a lot less kind of reps uh, to evaluate. So that's where you really will dig back a couple of years, especially if it's been the same four games. James, uh, Kaylee King burned his red shirt on Saturday. Yeah, you set a high bar for him back in the spring. What has he done since that point to kind of continue validating the early success that he had? Yeah, um, you know, he's, he's he's still a true freshman that's getting better, and he makes he makes plays, and he's extremely competitive, but there's still things that he needs to learn, um, you know, to have a chance to, to, to get significant playing time and kind of make make the move there just in terms of the level of consistency that's really what it's about um, it's who, who do the coaches and the, their peers feel like has earned the right to consistently be out there based on their actions and Kalen's done some really good things as a young player through spring ball and through training camp and even for this season um, but he just needs to you know he needs to do it on a more consistent basis and I think the other thing that we're trying to get through to a lot of these young guys is special teams. You guys have heard me tell a story a thousand times, but Grant Haley, as a young player, gained a lot of his confidence through special teams as his defensive reps grew. And that's what I'd like to see for Kalen. Kalen should be starting on three units on special teams right now, but he's not. Um, and and that, that's something I think that, that you know he, he can work on. James, I'm sorry. Offense, but, score a whole bunch. Well, yeah, but that, that's because of the turnovers that they get. So they're in a great, they're in a great situation because um, they're doing what they can do with the opportunities they get. They get the ball in short fields, and they've been able to turn them into touchdowns. So. Um, you know that's a positive for them. They, you know, it's it's hard for me to kind of talk about more than that because they have done what they needed to do with the situation that they've been in. James, along those lines, we see you guys working on ball security every time we're at practice. Is that amped up at all this week facing an opponent that's forced so many turnovers, or is there more of a getting the message across? No, um, we literally, and I've never any other place I've ever been. Um, except obviously at Vanderbilt and here, we do a specific ball security drill every single day. Always have. There's always times where the coordinators will come to me and say, "Hey, you know, during during that period today, I'd like to do this or do that." That's a non-negotiable. Um, there's a lot of things that we'll discuss and modify. That's not one of them. Um, so we we continue to emphasize it. Um, but no, it's not different this week. I have talked about it in the meeting. That that's been a huge um, part of their success this season, and um, a big reason why they are where they are. Um, so we we talked about that, but nothing in practice has really been different. It's gonna be weird going back out on the road again for the first time in a while. Just a pumping in the crowd noise as well. Just that environment on Saturday. Uh, no, it's it's but it's been what? How many weeks? Two, three weeks? Oh, been yeah. on for four. Huh? Been home for Oh, well, I guess it has been home. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I don't know. We're just, no, not really. James, if I could go back, uh, I don't want to assume anything, but it doesn't seem like you're trending towards burning a lot of red shirts with this freshman class. Um, does it feel a little bit different than freshman classes in years past in terms of that volume? And how does that maybe impact personnel plans moving forward when that many guys preserve a year of eligibility? Yeah, I'm not sure. Um, it's interesting. Sometimes you guys will ask questions and it triggers kind of a thought for me. I, I want to go back and look at that this year compared to, to previous years. Um, I'm, not, I'm not sure on that. I, I think a little bit, too, is the way our schedule played out. You know, um, we typically would have out-of-conference, different out-of-conference games to open the season. We got one of the most challenging schedules in college football. Um, 
so that may factor into it, but, but I'm not sure. I wouldn't necessarily say that this freshman class feels different than others. Um, I think a lot of it is the schedule, but I, I, it triggers the thought that I want to go back and kind of study this class compared to the, the last few. What are the, the triggers for you going to a game with a plan for how you want to attack a defense or an offense? and it doesn't work, or it does work, but then you're down by 14 and running the ball doesn't make sense anymore because there's five minutes left. What are the triggers for we're changing our approach to what we're doing in the middle of a game, and how do you get a team ready for those moments? Yeah, I think that's a good question. Um, you know, in terms of getting the team ready for it, besides four minute and two minute, when it it distinctly changes, uh, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I don't know if we necessarily do that. And I don't even know if, they, if we necessarily want them to know that. We would just manage that uh, from the sideline and how we call the games or when we get the plays in or the type of tempos uh, that we use. Um, so four minute, two minutes specifically, we're doing that. Besides that, we're trying to manage it as, as coaches. Um, obviously, being on the road has elements. Um, but, but, yeah, I think that's something that we'll try to more manage. I don't really want the players kind of understanding some of those things. I just want them to go out. James, we've seen Mike Yersich, you know, step out there and play quarterback a few times in practice. Uh, how does his hands-on approach kind of work with this offense and the way he's, he's I'm not following what you mean about playing quarterback. I cornerback. Oh, cornerback. Yeah. Yeah, no, there, there's sometimes he'll jump in, say, say uh, and that's not very different than, than in years past, but um, – Say we're running a certain play and the scout team guy didn't do it exactly like what Iowa is going to do on Saturday. Rather than take the time to explain it, he'll pull him out and jump in and, and give the look or Taylor or whoever it may be. Um, but yeah, he's 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 been hands on. But I would say I would say we've been in that situation really since I've been here. What do you think that surprised or maybe impressed you most with Mike in this offense? Yeah, I, I would. Not, not to kind of give you a short answer, but I, I wouldn't necessarily say anything is really surprising. What's impressive? You, um, you know, he's a he's a creative guy and um, loves plays. I know that sounds somewhat ridiculous as an offensive coordinator, but he loves plays. Um, so I think his creativity and his ability to complement and set up one play to the next week, I think has, has been really good, um, really good. Um, his intensity, um, I think has been really good for us. Um, you know, I think we're gonna continue to get better each week. And part of it is really the staff getting used to Mike and Mike getting used to the staff and the type of communication that uh, happens from the booth uh, down to him and then from the sideline as well. Uh, but, you know, so far, obviously, so good. Uh, but I still think there's a lot of room left for growth, and I, I think Mike would feel the same way. Speaking of that, um, there's always the adage of take what the defense gives you, but they're giving it to you for a reason. How do you, as the head coach, kind of teach that or give that to your offensive coordinator and your quarterback of knowing when to be aggressive? Yeah, and I think you guys have heard me say this in years past where that's where I think my past of, of being a play caller, so having a kind of understanding of that and being able to be on the sideline and watch the flow of the game. And sometimes you're so close to something, so hearing a different perspective is good sometimes. Um, it's it's kind of reminding, hey, you know, we, we need to push the ball down the field or – they haven't stopped the run yet. Let, let's get back to the run or, or things like that. And I've always done that with, with the coordinators um, as a reminder. Or you had some plays that you were successful with in the first quarter, the first half, and we haven't gone back to it. You know, things like that. So um, that, that's what I try to do as much as I possibly can with Brent, um, with with Mike, with Joe as, as well. Um, but but he's been he's been great. You know, he's been great. Here, did I answer your question? Yeah. Do you have a couple of assistants, former assistants, who are facing each other this weekend in the uh, and, um, yep. Do you keep tabs on those guys and watch the progress? And how much pride do you take in seeing former yeah. assistants? Yeah, it's, it's, it's been really cool to see guys leave here and, um, and become head coaches or go to the NFL or whatever it may be. I mean, that's, that's part of my responsibility as well, too, right? It's, it's to help the players reach their dreams. 
It's also to put, you know, a, a product on the field that our fans and alumni and Letterman can be proud of. It's also to help these guys' careers and whatever whatever they may want to do. So to see those two guys playing each other this week is cool. I went into Jevin's office to kind of look at the weekly highlight, and he was watching Ricky's press conference, and it kind of rewind, rewinded and showed me a couple things you know, that Ricky had said. Um, yeah, so it's it's cool. Um, you know, it, it, I, I think this is the first you know, two former staff members uh, going against each other and, and having success. It's also interesting with the staff, you know, they're opening press conferences and the staff will bring up things that, that kind of showed up in the press conference. Um, I'm, I'm happy for both of those guys. Those, those guys are both really good football coaches. Those guys are both really good recruiters um, and they're really good men. And, um, you know, It'll be interesting to see how this this one plays out. Obviously, uh, it's weird because it's for both of them. If, if I'm correct, here, both of them their first year coaching games, but Ricky's second year being a head coach. I know that sounds strange, but uh, I think that's the reality. Of it. Jim's been dramatic, um, but more than that, I'm just I'm a big big fan. Um, he's very appreciative. Coming from Trenton, New Jersey, and from Lackawanna Junior College, he's very appreciative of his opportunities and experience here at Penn State. He's always got a huge smile on his face. Um, he's one of those guys that I think does a really good job of uh, being a great teammate, uh, but also understanding how to be with the coaches and is, is coachable, uh, but also can have fun um, you know, with the coaches as well. Uh, I know him and Coach Poindexter have a great relationship. I'm just, I'm really proud of him. I, I spoke with Coach Duda today and just, Told him how you know how great uh, you know Tig is doing. I'm just I'm really happy. I'm not surprised at the success that he's having this year. Uh, I think we got two of the better safeties in college football. Thank you. Oh, go ahead, Nate. Sorry, uh, one more. <laughs> how does having a consistent effort on points change what you do, if at all? Like, how do you confidence when you join back there? Being so consistent. Yeah. Um, you know, that, that's where the discussion sometimes comes is we're doing such a good job of sky punts and things like that where, you know, should we go for it on fourth down in plus territory um, or should we pin them deep? The analytics people will tell you you should go for it on every single fourth down, but I do think it has to factor in, which I don't know if, if they do, um, how good is your punter at pinning people deep and how, how good are your bullets at playing the ball in the air? Um, so I, I think that helps. Um, hopefully we're not in a situation where we have to swing the field position, but he's shown he's been able to do that. And some punters will do it, but they don't do it with hang time, and it becomes a negative. You actually out kick your coverage. And he's been able to kick it for you know, tremendous distance and swing the field position, but also do it in a way where we have a chance to cover it with field position as well as hang time. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Thanks. 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 Thanks.